Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fiber Stitch. I really love the sea and I really love needle felting. So we're going to do another little picture here. What I've got out is some scrim or really, really um, light gauze. And uh, this is a really good thing to have sometimes. If you've got a dyeing project, just use it as a rag to wipe up your dyes and uh, you'll end up with these wonderful different things, different color ranges. But I'm going to use a couple of these as a background. I've gotten a, a mottled blue background because I thought, well, it's sky, it's sea colors, we're good to go. And I'm just going to add to it now with some lovely fibers and, and wool and uh, yarn and this. So I'm just going to get some of the pieces that I want, maybe a darker color as well. And, uh, and those beautiful turquoise aqua jade colors so and the darker one well the sea is darker towards the back so I'll put it on the top so just placing it and thinking oh yeah I, I like that but what I really like to do with this stuff is to uh, pull the weave apart and get these lovely organic looking holes and um, some bits you know the weave will bunch up and then other bits it it uh, you can allow the background to show through so it's a really beautiful start and it gives you a, yeah it gives you a starting point so sometimes you can sort of build from that I'm just going to use a bit of it and uh, tease it out and put it down now this is a video about needle felting so I'm going to say straight up some things won't needle felt and needle felting is where you push the felting needle and all the fibers uh, get caught in it and push through to the back of the fabric so then well some fibers better than others like I know this grim that I'm using won't really won't really go through so what I'm doing is laying a very fine bit of um, of silk mixed with wool it's a, it's a blend or silk or wool or lots of things will go through um, bit of roving uh, but whatever's going to work basically so I can lay a thin veneer of it over the top and with my needle going in and out in and out as long as you go in the same direction as you go out you're not going to snap your needle um, but it really does uh, it's a wonderful craft I really do like the painterly effect of it here I'm adding in some lighter colors and and uh, this one's a yarn. It's a it's a real hairy kind of yarn. It probably won't go down very well either. But I love that little bit of texture and the colours there suit it. So I'm just going to, you know, add a little bit in and then a little bit of something over the top in places. So bits of it will still show underneath. So that's what it's a it's a game of layers. But look at how beautifully those colors meld together you can really enjoy yourself and you don't need to go to a lot of expense you may have a little bit of roving you can quite often buy that um, in small amounts or sometimes I just use um, you know wools and I pull them apart and just use um, variegated ones are great because then you you have all different colors in it let's see how this is building you use a sponge at the back and the needle pushes those fibers through and you end up with some of the fibers on the back but that's what melds it to the material so there'll be plenty of this opportunity to go stab 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 that's what it's all about but I just love the way that you can get uh, blends of colors I suppose you know you can um, say oh, okay I wish that was a little bit more bright or a bit more blue so add a little bit in yeah that one's definitely a, a more silk than wool but a certain percentage of it will go through so let's have a closer look to see what we've got so far you can see that we've got some of our scrim showing underneath we've got some lovely yarn there's that scrim again 
Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. And I'm working at putting a darker colour at the back and a lighter colour at the front. So I'm grabbing out my little box here of odds and ends. My little scrap box. I have a scrap box of fabrics and a scrap box of fibres like this or bits of wool that I've used or yarns or interesting things. And I'm just getting out anything that's in that colour range that I'm after. Like look at this one. But, you know, we may be able to use it, maybe not, but I'm getting out a palette of colour. Something that I can just pick up and add without going looking for things. So, there is all sorts. Look at that. That's an unravelled yarn, but I just love the colour. It's a nice metallic, beautiful green. I've used that one before. And here's some roving I think that was a hand dyed one that I did. But you know, it's all useful. That's a little bit of organza. It's a crystal organza with some different colours in. I could pop that in if I wanted. I don't know what I'll use, but it's just handy to have it all there. So let's let's just think about it. What do we want? Well, I'm just going to transfer now to the, a bigger sponge. This is just a piece of old cushion. But I think it's really great to be able to hold the whole thing there. You can just keep stabbing at any time. The more you stab, the better it gets. The more it pushes through, the more it stays where you put it. But I'll just pick out some goodies now and add them. These are uh, mohair kind of coils. I think that's what they are. But I'll, you know, make some of it, uh, I'll tease out, and I'll leave some bits with those lovely gorgeous curls, like a, like curly hair. And um, when I've decided where to put it, and that's okay too, you just move it around, see where you might like it. You know, if it's too purple, you can put something over the top, but it's really, it's just fun to just play with and see where you end up. A lot of people do needle felting animals, but I prefer to do these pictures. They're just 2D instead of 3. But look at this, this weird yarn. I've got a novelty yarn, but I'm thinking maybe I like the colour, you see. So I'm just, those tufts that are there, I'm just seeing if I can make them less squarish by teasing them out a little bit. You never know. It's not like I think it will uh, push through, but something over the top, and it, it could be good. We could have bits of it showing. So at the back, though, where I'm wanting that richness, dark, darker colours, which is natural for the ocean, you'll see that they have a, a darker line towards the horizon. We'll use some of that blue fabric as sky. So, yeah, I'm just trying to tack it, but it really is not a sticker. Uh, here I have some threads, you know, just a, just a bunch of threads that was something that was pulled out or unraveled, and but they just look so nice, so right. It's all about the colour for me, colour and texture. Here I've got, uh, this is a blend of, of um, wool roving and a tiny bit of silk in there, and the silky bits are actually um, in a paler, whitish colour. And it does look like that. If we, if we get it right, it'll look like the, the caps on the distant waves. And hopefully some of that original that we put down underneath is still showing through. So plenty of stabbing. And as I mentioned, or I hope I mentioned, when you put your needle in, pull it out the same way. Like don't change direction and pull it out. You will snap your needle. But if you treat it right, it'll last you a very long time. So I'm glad I've got my palette out. There's so many beautiful colours I can add. A oh, little touch of green up there, maybe. More stabbing. We'll speed it up. You've seen me stab. Yeah, and how about some tops of the waves? So I add a little bit of white here and there, long strands rather than a blob of it. 
because we want it to look like the tops of the waves or you know, the cresting bits at the back. Some nice aqua. Because they're not always white, are they? They're just a lighter colour. And you can see what I mean. It comes together quite nicely. It's your own little art project. It is a lot of fun. So I will just keep adding snippets of colour. Look how fine I use it. I don't try and plonk it on in one big, uh, big amount, you know, a thick layer. They're always gossamer thin so that the other colours underneath show. Let's have a look here. So that's that yarn that's coming out. You can still see bits of it. Uh, but I love those colours, I do. There's a little bit of the scrim still showing. If it didn't, you know, if I did end up covering it all up, it doesn't really matter. Or I can easily um, pull the wool off again. If you don't like any part of it, you can pull it off and, uh, and then reattach it. You can make as many mistakes and changes as you like until you get it the way that you like it. Here's that lovely dark blue with the white bits in. I'll try and get a little bit more of that across. Did you see how I just grabbed some yarn just then? It was just an acrylic wool kind of yarn, but I wanted it. I want to get a straight line across here. And I thought that would help with the dark line that I want and the um, definition of the horizon up against the sky. So I'll try and get it pretty straight. And I'll have to lay some, a little fine bit of, uh, bit of that roving over the top so that it will hold down better. Because, uh, like I say, some things go through easily, some don't. But just tacking it at the moment. See how you can just shift across and give it a little poke here and there just to tack it. Now I've got quite a dark band across the back, haven't I? I'll have to bring a little bit more, either put a lighter colour on it or a darker colour down through it so it's not just a, a solid block of colour, you know what I mean? So at the moment I'm putting a nice jadey green colour. That'll help blend it to all of those jewel like colours at the front. Much nicer. And see how I'm using that needle to just pull that horizon down where I want it to be. Or... And think of the whole thing sometimes like that. Just put your hands up or something to make you see it as a picture. Rather than, well, rather than just a piece of material. There we go. A little bit more of that lovely, that lovely silky colour. Lo sorry, that <laughs> lovely aqua silk. And a little bit more of the jade over top of it, you see, that will, that's a roving, so it's pure wool, and that means it'll hold it down the best. So I can get quite into this, and uh, I think it's one of those crafts that's very um, therapeutic. You know, you don't have to worry if you don't like it, you just add to it or pull bits off, and it's your opportunity to do something artistic with no uh, no fear you know you don't have to be able to hold a paintbrush or or anything like that you know one of those needles and a few scraps and you're away but it doesn't have to be seascapes and landscapes I just particularly like them yes those lovely mohair curls again they will really add some you know, like the waves are really bounding in. That's a little bit of the white on top of it too to try and try and suggest the top of that crest of that wave coming. Lovely. So this is something that could take you a, 
an hour or two, or it's something that you could spend uh, as much time as you like on, really. Always adding more, find something else you like. This is called dry felting, because uh, wet felting is when you layer fibres of wool up, you know, one way, uh, say up to down, and then across it from left to right, and then another layer top to down. And then you end up uh, having to wet it and work it and manipulate it. And a lot of elbow grease goes into it. So I find this much easier. And see how I'm now making sure I'm getting that nice straight line. And I'm moving my needle down. I'm still using the same angle in as I go out, but it's helping to sort of hold all of that down and just su suggest those smaller, smaller waves at the back. I think it's coming together, but there's always room for more. little wisps to create those crests of the distant waves. And about now I'm thinking, well, we've got that blue material for sky and that's pretty good, but just well, just a little bit, just that tiny bit of, uh, of something that's the same color but adds a little variation there like whites and um, greys, blues, those kind of colours that you would find in the sky. So I'm, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just adding a tiny bit of uh, extra, just as a, as a light veneer on the top. That will suggest, look at that, lovely little cloud shapes. So p pull it out finely and then, oops, now let's have a look here. Do you see that that's showing you it's all going through? All of those threads that we're punching through with our needle are going to the back of the fabric, melding it into a hole. And here's a nice wispy bit. I'm just going to pull something more round, pretty cloud-like. You can manipulate the fibre before you put it down to suggest a shape, a long, thin shape. You know, if you were wanting to do a sheep in the field, it would be a much thicker ball shape. But I want this wispy kind of cloud, and I don't want it to be very, uh, something that you really notice, just something that finishes that sky off and makes it look a little more realistic. Now, the only other thing I might add here, I think, is where the bottom is, I'm just sort of wanting to... Hmm, Make a little bit more like you know, the froth that comes in from the waves at the bottom. See, I teased that one out in the center and then I, I uh, pinched it together at the ends, rolling it and pulling it apart. Well, that gave me the shape that I want. So I'm popping that one in. But I still feel, you know, what about the sand? If we had something that was more golden, just a tinge of gold, and I'm going to get out this yarn for that because it just... See what I mean about oodles of colours in there? And I only want a tiny bit. So I'll just cut a bit out where it's got some sort of vague whitey sandy colour. And can you see how you can just pull it apart like that? And that is just, well, that's what you want. That's just wool. That's roving that has been spun very loosely in some places and tight in others. But when you pull it apart, you've got all that lovely raving to play with. So can you see how it's got a tiny tinge of colour there? That's probably a little bit thick. I only need a tiny bit really. I just wanted to just suggest more that it was coming into sand soon. We're right on the edge of the ocean where it meets the land. So I'll add in that little touch just because it makes me happy. 
and a little bit more on the other side maybe just to straighten this picture up a little bit just that little tinge will do me just spread it out fine there so that looks like the lacy froth that you get on the edge of the sea I'm really happy with that. I love the texture. I really do. I could imagine all kinds of things in there. I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful craft for making a quick artwork. Beautiful. But you know what I didn't think about beforehand? What kind of frame am I going to put around it? Look at it. It looks good in my hands like that, but. Yeah, this is a four by six inch cutout in this in this map board surround. See how that gives me a certain picture, but not all of it. Well, I don't know. Which is a lesson to us all. You should really think beforehand about how the dimensions of your picture. But I was just having too much fun. So that's just showing you, you can take just a bunch of fibres, yarns, threads, and make some magic with it. Let's have a look at a few close-ups now. Isn't it gorgeous? The jewel-like colours. And so much texture. It's funny when you can see little bits poking through that you, you know you've put in and it's just a pleasure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I find it very interesting and therapeutic and I hope you do too. So don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel if you want. Press like if you like it and I'll see you next time.